started doing drag in 1992 when I entered a talent quest out at the Midnight Factory. And it was actually a dare. I used to hang around with this lovely Chinese guy which used to dress up as, um, do you remember this? Madge Simpson with the big blue wig and yeah. all that. Um, I think his name was Tina Thong. Tina Thong. I think it was Tina Thong. But she'd wear a thong and nothing else out, yeah. basically. A slutty version of Mar Madge Simpson. And did a talent quest um, there called Miss Midnight Factory which went on because Akon used that and did um, like Miss Western Sydney. So they had like beauty pageants and talent quests. It was all, all the rage, but they sort of phased out in mm -hmm. 2000, basically. For me, I've never really done drag as a living. It's more of a, more of a social thing. Um, to make a name for yourself, you have to make a point of attending a lot of social events. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, Beverly Buttercup is not Beverly Buttercup today because I do drag. It's everything I do as Bradley yeah. that makes Beverly who Beverly is. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because 95% um, of the stuff I do is out of drag. It's that 5% of the time where you're on stage performing or you're in drag. Like, tonight, once I get dressed, all I want to do is take it off. Mm -hmm. but, and I don't do it as a socialising thing where a lot of the young ones put it on, spend, dra spend nine or ten hours in drag. Oh my God, that'd kill me now. Well, with a social dance, you're obligated to give um, at least 70% of what you earn away to charity. <laughs> don't do that. You're just making me feel... I feel blumpy enough. Blumpy. Blumpy enough. Yeah, so that's how that all came about, basically. Is that better? Yeah. Do you want me to talk dirty? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so on, uh, on average, example, I've only been, I've only pretty, pretty much running social dances for the past six years. Before that, it was always other people, and I worked for other people. And then six years ago, I went off with a few of other cast members, and we started a night, but they've all left me. I mean, oh yeah, there's one original left <laughs> out of all of them. Um, in that period, I think we've given over eighteen thousand dollars away to charity. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm happy to say that we've achieved a little bit. Like you can't compare it to um, you can't compare it to businesses because businesses have the avenue for promoting and they can actually probably give all the money away. Mm -hmm. When running social dances, you have costs like function fee, DJ hire. Advertising, special effects. No, I'm just. Uh, uh, I just have other costs involved. So you sort of get them out of the way first, um, and try and have a small entertainment budget. But my main focus has been to try and give people in Western Sydney their own place to perform. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So then you didn't have to travel to the city. Like I love going to the city. Don't get me wrong. I mean, who doesn't love going when they wave the checkbook around? come and do this, you know, and that, I mean that's totally different because then that's work, I go in and I do it as work, mm -hmm. but um, running social nights are very hectic, there's a lot, people think you just turn up but it's, there's a lot of politics um, behind the scene, all the social dancers in one way or another have given money away to charity, because you can't be actually when running a social dance, you can't be seen to make a profit. You can't, you can't be seen to make money from it. The main charities that I've always got behind is, as I was saying earlier, the CSN, originally with the Castaways Days, and then it revolved into The Haven, which is a hospice. Did I say that wrong? Hospice? That's right. Hospice. Um, it look after people with HIV and AIDS. It's in the Blacktown area. So... Um, and then it went into us giving money to them. And then it revolved into um, giving money to Acorn Western Sydney because they approached me and said that they were going to set up um, youth social groups in the Campbelltown and Parramatta area. Now, you've got to take out, um, like example, tonight, coming tonight, we need, we need 56 people to cover the cost just to run the night. So anything after the total cost of running the night, we put aside and it normally goes into the charity nights or advertising. So yep. the only way we could probably give more money away is actually with a higher door charge, which we actually have 
used to be 750, then we increased it to 10. Um, and that's why I wanted to do two charity nights. Well, in actual fact, we're doing three charity nights this year. So then I can restructure next year. Hi everybody, Beverly Buttercup is finally ready. Bye bye Bradley. Hello Beverly. Two hours later, and see? Any old fat bald man can be turned into a glamazon. <laughs> Miss Beverly Buttercup! We were always together. You knew every thought that I had, and my wish was your command. I can match me in hand. to be one of the most selfless drag queens that I know. Nothing she does is actually for herself. Everything she does in her drag career has been for the community. She wants to make sure that the people of Western Sydney have a voice and somewhere safe to go. She's raised such an incredible amount of money since she started drag and she's, she's great. She's great. And she's one deepest to prove it. I've known Beverly for the last ooh, 12 years and every year, whether she be Part of the night, or not part of the night, she's always been involved in fundraising here in the western suburbs, whether it be through social dances, through selling ribbons for, for Akon, uh, for uh, holding uh, sausage sizzles for the, for the western suburbs haven at social dances, whatever she can be involved in, she's been involved in. I think she provides amazing places for and safe places for people to, to go. Um, if it wasn't for her community events, I wouldn't be here because that's how I found her. Um, it was a Halloween dance. We just got dressed up and she's the first drag queen I ever saw and she, I just followed her to every place that she ever opened mm -hmm. in by her side. Because of her, we've got these, these venues that we have every month and it's a really wonderful place to go. It's safe and because I find um, the gay community is so easy to be with, I can be myself and it's just different atmosphere, you can really have a good time. So if we didn't have these venues, we'd have to go all the way to the city to, to have places like this. And it's something that um, you get to know everyone, you've got a network of friends through these places, so, so you really look forward to it. Yeah. And she does that, and then of course proceeds to go to Acon and other charities, so it's a really good thing. Right.